Hello everyone and welcome back to the Goomba Grows YouTube channel where we learn all about mycology and today we're going to be learning how to spawn to bolt. So before we start, number one thing in mycology is always to keep a cleanly work area in a sterile environment. Although I don't have a flow hood and other high tech equipment like that for this, we can do what we can by starting to isopropyl alcohol the entire surface that you're going to be working with as well as all the tools that you're going to be working with. And just a side note to add to that, guys, make sure you are using the 70% isopropyl alcohol. Although you may think the 90 and the 99% alcohol will do a better job, it actually evaporates too quickly to fully sanitize the environment. So you're gonna wanna make sure you leave it on there as well for 30 seconds. It doesn't work instantly. So spray your ISO, let it sit for a, for a minute or two, and then go ahead and wipe everything down. Now this may get repetitive y'all, but just make sure you guys do absolutely sanitize everything that you can, everything that's going to touch the grain, the soil, the monotub, anything like that. You really do wanna make sure it is 100% as clean as you guys can get it. Now, before we spawn to bulk, after you've already sterilized the environment, sanitize it as much as you guys can, make sure you guys get everything prepared and ready to go beforehand that way you don't mess anything up you don't miss any steps that could possibly cause contamination or for you to leave your soil or your cake out for longer than it should be in this open air environment so you got the 70 percent iso here you're going to want to get some painters tape this is for the colonization step you will need micro pour tape when it comes to fruiting but for now painters tape and then you're also going to want some paper towels and something sharp to cut the cope in the bag make sure you guys sanitize it as much as you can we're also going to have a monotub, obviously. Now, this is the max yield bin monotub. It's not a cheap tub by any means. You can totally go pick one up at Walmart, drill the holes yourself. It's really not a problem. Um, I just started with this just to make things easy for me since I'm a beginner. I wanted it to be as easy as possible. So you can also buy the max yield bin colonizer lid, which instead of having that, um, kind of like sharp point to the top. It's gonna to be just a flat lid and it's gonna be a lot lower. It's very nice for colonizing. I just do not have it. So we're just gonna go ahead and my, or painters tape up the holes on the, the other lid. And obviously to spawn a bolt, you are going to need your substrate. This could be CVG or just manure based substrate. You can find lots of different ones online, say Etsy, North Spore has some great ones. It all depends. You can even go and make your home your own at home. You're also going to need the fully colonized grain bag there. And now when it comes to the ratio for substrate to colonized grain, you're going to want to stick around a one to one to avoid contamination. So I've heard many people that do a one to four, which if it works for you, it works for you. It depends also how small of a cake you're trying to make. So if you're doing a shoe box, a lot of the time you can get away with a one to four ratio. But when you're doing a big max yield bin like this, you're gonna wanna stick around more of a one to one. So we have a three pound colonized grain bag here, as well as a five pound bag of manure based substrate. And this is already sterile, so you don't have to worry about pasteurizing it or anything like that. But we will cover that in future episodes. And the last thing that we are going to need to spawn to bulk is going to be a liner. Now you don't necessarily actually need a liner. You, it is more of an optional thing, but it is best to use to avoid side pins. So you don't need to buy a specific liner for this. This is one off the Max Yield Bin website. Fits perfectly into the Max Yield Bin, but you could totally just use like a trash bag or something of that nature to just make sure you keep the cake as close together as possible. It kind of shrinks as your cake grows, it'll shrink as it eats up the substrate in the water, and you're gonna want the liner to go ahead and try to minimize those side pins. For the next step, we're going to be preparing the holes. We're going to be covering them on the Max Yield Bin lid, as well as the Max Yield Bin base. You got the small holes there all throughout the side, and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and cover those, at least during the colonizing process with painter's tape to make sure you keep out any contaminants that could be flying in there, so. Just grab your painter's tape right here, Have loads of trouble getting the end because I got these gloves on. Mm. 
And there you go, guys. So you see here, I got the outsides of all the holes taped up. It doesn't need to look beautiful. It just needs to be sealed. And you just wanna go ahead and do that around every single side of the max yield bin. Make sure all those holes are covered as best as possible. And now we're going to do the same with the lid. It's gonna be a little bit harder for me because I should have picked up a thicker roll of painter's tape when I got this. So now I'm gonna to have to do two pieces, but it's no problem. Just make sure it's sealed as best as possible. And boom. Now that you guys have the holes all covered, make sure they are as sealed as can be. After doing this for the first time too, I can also totally recommend to, you probably don't need these gloves on just yet. Look at that. Tape ripped the hole straight through them just because, I mean, the tape was just kept sticking to them. It's don't need the gloves until you guys are handling the substrate and stuff. For the most part, obviously keep it as clean as possible. And now that we have the holes all sealed, I'm sure you guys can almost guess what the next step of this process is. And that is indeed to go ahead and sanitize everything once more with isopropyl alcohol. You're going to want to get every nook and cranny, every little crevice. Make sure you let the isopropyl alcohol sit for a minute or two. Get it on that tape and stuff, you know, just make sure everything is 100% clean as can be. Let it sit and then give it a wipe. And I know with some bins, it can be hard to get every nook and cranny, especially like even the max yield bins have quite a few little just crevices, but just make sure you guys take your time, get everything that you guys can. And also do not forget to clean your liner with isopropyl alcohol. Do not want to miss that. It just sets in there just like that. And then go ahead and give it a wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol as well. And if you guys have sensitive breathing, just make sure, probably wear a mask or something while you're, you're dealing with all these isopropyl alcohol fumes. They can really be pretty strong. Moving on to almost the final step here. You guys are going to want to break up your substrate as well as break up your grain spawn one more time. Make it all nice individual pieces. Also take your time when you are breaking up your grain spawn as you want to make sure you get all that mycelium broke up as best as possible. And just do your best when breaking this up as it's not gonna be perfect. You're still gonna have clumps in there and you can get that all figured out in the max yield bin. I went ahead and put the gloves back on for this step as you are going to be mixing the grain with the soil, the substrate, I'm sorry. And you do not want to have any contamination go from your hands onto your cake. As well as you're gonna to have to be breaking up the individual chunks that you're gonna be finding as you mix everything together. You wanna to make sure you get all the chunks broken up as best as you can to get a nice even, colonization on the top of your cake. Now it is also to mention that when mixing your five pound bag of substrate with your three pound grain spawn, you are going to want to make sure that you leave a little bit of soil, substrate, sorry, keep calling it that, a little bit of substrate in the bag to cover the top layer. It's not really a casing layer, more of a pseudo casing layer. Casing layers are not really necessary. Um, but you can obviously use them and it can benefit different types of mushrooms. We'll start by cutting open our substrate bag. Now 
Looks like I got a little piece of the bag in there, no good, but should be okay. Now this is a manure-based substrate, so it just smells absolutely great in my house. And that's also why I have the gloves on. Now for the grain. You can get a nice whiff of that. Usually that's gonna be a really good tell of if there's any contaminants in your bag, it's really just by smelling it. If it smells off, if it smells, you know, nasty, you can almost be certain that you do not have clean grain. It should smell very earthy. It's almost impossible to explain what it smells like. And I, I've heard a lot of people say that while I was watching my own videos to figure out what it does smell like so I can know if there was any contamination, but it really is unexplainable, the smell, but it just smells good. If you have any uncolonized grains, try to pick them out. This bag was pretty fully colonized, good to go, so I didn't really have to worry about that. But sometimes you'll see little spots at maybe the top of your uh, grain bag that will not be colonized. I would just pick them out with a sterilized fork or a scalpel or something. Some people like to layer. So they'll do like a layer of substrate, layer of grain spawn. And that's totally fine. It really is truly whatever works best for you. You wanna find your sweet spot and what works best. So it's by no means perfectly flat. I'm sure you guys can tell. You just want to go ahead and take that little bit of substrate you have left and just make a little pseudo casing layer there. This helps keep water trapped in, the moisture content. But so long as your water content is good to go, you almost never need to add any more water to this as it's colonizing. Just wanna leave it be, let it do its thing. I'm definitely not gonna be able to cover all of the grain with that little bit of substrate I just left. So I highly underestimated how much substrate I left in that bag. So I'm just gonna actually go ahead and end up mixing it all together and say, screw the casing layer, the pseudo casing layer. Hey y'all, quick side note. I just wanted to mention that in the last frame or clip or whatever it was for you guys, I said, I, did, I, I didn't leave enough substrate to cover the top layer of the bulk spawn. And because of that, I went and picked up another bag of substrate basically because I didn't want to risk the run of the grains drying out and everything. And that's really what the whole pseudo casing layer slash casing layer is even for in the first place is you don't want your grains to dry out while they are colonizing. So we're gonna go ahead and take probably just about a pound or two. This is a five pound bag. I'm probably just gonna take a pound or two, whatever it takes to cover the top, make sure no grains are exposed. This is a day later, so that's why you guys can see the condensation on the inside of the tub. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. You can already tell it is starting to colonize and it looks really good. 
And this is what the max yield bin looks like after I cover the top with substrate. Just keep that moisture held in and everything. Don't want any of the grains drying out. And we'll check back in in a couple of days. Hey everyone, it's four days later and as you guys can see, everything's colonizing pretty well. Uh, the mycelium looks very healthy, except for this one spot right here, but that's a future problem that we'll go over in a different episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this spawning to Volk video, and if you did, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.